Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Principia and Kerbalism. We've got all the realisms that I can deal with for now. I'm sure there are other realisms out there. And what I wanted to do was test out the Lynx lander. We had previously tested out the Lynx on orbit around the moon and coming back and everything. Uh, but I had not tested Lynx lander and I hadn't tested it in the Kerbalism yet. And there is a comp well, there are many complications. The first complication is that the Lynx lander is a pass-through lander, meaning that the Kerbals are not in the IVA mode. They are in EVA, effectively, because they are seated in command chairs in here and can then float around. The question is whether that's going to work with Kerbalism or not. And I have hit a snag, and that snag is that while they will have scrubbing, they don't have any habitat volume. The, it doesn't read this as habitat volume once they're in EVA mode. And pressurization is considered not required. I tried giving them a pressurization module in the EVA suit. Um, I tried to add it, it, tried to add it, but that did not work. And so living space is cramped. Uh, comfort is poor. At least they're not alone. Uh, pressurized, no. And so the duration it says is 5 days and 18 hours. Uh, as far as radiation protection, I don't even know if they get additional radiation protection if I put some... Uh, actually, I don't even see how to put the shielding on this spacecraft. I Maybe it only... I bet you it only puts the shielding thing on spacecraft that have crew capacity. Because this thing doesn't have crew capacity right now, it can't have shielding. Uh, so that's a whole other thing. Uh, let's open it up. Would the command chairs be able to have shielding? Mm, not as such, no. So the command chairs are exempt from the shielding. So I have, I have no idea. I looked at the configuration files. I have no idea how to potentially fix this for the purposes of the pass-through system. Uh, so that means that with the pass-through system at most, they'll be able to be in a pass-through module for only five days. So they won't be able to treat like the interior of Starship as a habitat or anything like that. So uh, that will take some fixing. <laughs> so yeah, as far as the food, water, and oxygen being perpetual, uh, if we take this off, at least they it does read that they're getting the food, water, and oxygen from the resources in the cabin. The lithium hydroxide is being consumed somehow. I guess their their own scrubber uses it. I don't know, but the uh, they aren't packing the lithium hydroxide in EVA, so I don't know how that is. Anyway, so that's one whole set of problems with Kerbalism. The other so we'll launch it and then we will see how far we get with the stress. Basically, can we get over to the moon and land? I don't know. And not that they're supposed to launch in this anyway, but the crew cabin is the same way, so there's no difference between this and the orbital version. So anyway, the version that would carry them there. The other problem is, as you can see, it's way wide for the Sajita rocket. Um, at least the Sajita rocket with this upper stage. So this is awkward, and clearly would not fit in any of the normal Sajita fairings. So. I have had to mock up a procedural upper stage that changes this. Uh, note that right now we have 17,253 meters per second. I have no idea whether it is enough to get it over to the moon and have it land and lift off again. So that's a whole issue. Uh, but anyway, let me uh, show you the mocked up other version and we'll see what numbers it has. So this is the Sagita SHX, Super Heavy X for Extended. And I hate to do this to my rockets, but here we are. Uh, somehow the, <laughs> the Delta V is less, even though I've, I mean, it's complicated, isn't it? Well, anyway, we are going to try this out. Uh, put Big Four in. Oh, Dilbert wanted to come. Um, no, we'll try the big four and see what happens. Okay. Let's launch. Oh, uh, it said that they are out of nitrogen just now. Which they ought not to be. 
All right, I guess we'll have to launch to figure out what's actually going on. And Principia. I wonder if we have enough power, though. I was too busy checking on all the other things. Okay, we're launching from Boca Chica, by the way. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Ooh, we got launch tower, launch thing, rocking. Okay, we better turn quickly because this thing has a high thrust to weight ratio. Why do we start out with waste and wastewater? Gosh darn it. If the pad have taken that away. I mean, I guess it doesn't look too bad. Well now what does it say? Well, limited electric charge, but we don't have the solar panels out yet. Nitrogen is perpetual. Shielding, none, living space cramped, comfort, poor. It can call home. That's nice. So it's upgraded from before. Wonder why in the VAB it thought they couldn't call home. Water, it says only three days. I don't know why. Why would they be using more water than usual? It also said that there was enough water in the VAB. Oh, it's really high G-forces. I should have thrown all down. <laughs> Just looking at all that stuff. Okay, booster set. We have some remaining methane in those. Okay, throttle up. Well, I guess we can get rid of the fairings if they're really a big problem. Crawl down again. Separate fairings. Ooh! They tilted it in like that. Why? Silly procedural fairings. 1.357 per second. I don't know if the solar panels I put on there supply quite enough, actually. I really need to make custom solar panels for it. Let go of those fairings as well. Okay, separation and ignition. I had pre-extended the nozzle already in the inner stage since it was such a big inner stage. We not only need this stage to transfer us over, but we also need to capture, and I forgot the MLI layers. Uh, okay, well we'll check the power as well. And then we'll have to try this again with the MLI layers and probably larger solar panels. But we'll also see what else might be going wrong here. I mean, I don't understand the water. Water sublimator. Oh, I guess that's because of their, their suits need this water sublimator thing. I guess that takes a lot of water. So we might have to pack extra for the pass-through stuff. Well, maybe despite the lack of insulation on here that would allow us to capture properly, we should try out the transfer anyway, insofar as we can get there, to see how the comfort level really hits. Because it said like five days, but when exactly did they go crazy, right? And uh, actually in the VAB they said I uh, had a comfort factor of 20%, so maybe they have more time available to them here now, but I can't really tell. They already, well, Jeb is already 1% stress. I thought he was a badass. Why would he already be 1% stress? Hmm. Anyway, so we can't really see the time for that here right now, the habitat time. So we'll just uh, shoot them out and see how it goes and then do some fixes. Okay, I've got a plot to the moon here. It's got a pretty substantial normal component to it. And that's because of the 2.5 degree relative inclination that we have right now. And the fact that we want to get there quickly uh, for the comfort stuff. So we'll see. <clears throat> this might or might not be... I mean, it, it, probably things are going to go horribly wrong. Especially because of the boil off. But we'll see about the comfort. That's what I'm mostly interested in at the moment.
in fact, I didn't even put the MLI layers on the lander stage, so that's probably going to boil off too. But we'll see what the severity of the boil off is. Actually, we could probably gauge the power situation right now. Let's get the solar panels out. Oh, it's the six. Uh, I hate these. Anyway. I didn't want this kind, particularly because it can get in the way of the RC. I mean, it doesn't really get in the way of the RCS thrusters. It just visually seems to be blasted by the RCS thrusters. You see, I wanted the long ones. Um, as expected, it's not quite enough. We get down to 0.42 charge drawn, but that is not what I wanted. Okay, so we're probably not going to have enough electric charge. But as far as we get, we'll see how much comfort they really lose, how much stress they gain, really. Right now, Jeb is the only one stressed at 1%. Okay, we should have ignited already. If anybody is familiar enough with Kerbalism to suggest a way for the Kerbals to be in seats, command chairs, and not and still benefit from the comfort of their surroundings, if you will. Please feel free to tell me, but that's a very arcane sort of thing. Very specific to this pass-through system. Essentially, we're changing the rest of inclination, increasing it in order to make it effectively an off-plane transfer. That's what's going on. Okay, oh, it got rid of the node again. Why, why, does, why does the node go away? I had that with the previous video as well. Well, we went too far this time. Yeah, I don't know why the node suddenly disappears on me. Nobody said anything about that as far as I know. That didn't happen before I added Kerbalism, I thought. Okay, well, that'll have to do. Okay, we are on our way. We're actually recharging better in this direction. Don't know how that works. Well, turning around is going to mess everything up, but we're going to turn around anyway. Boil off is too much, obviously. A producer of oxygen has incoherent behavior at high warp, it said. It's now. I guess we'd have to warp in the tracking station then. But we'll just continue out here, I think. 12 hours in. So basically, with these solar panels, we would have a day. I think I'm curious enough about the comfort levels because they're only at 2% stress and oh, okay. Only Jeb is at 2% stress. The others are at zero and they only have 1% radiation. Now we just did a mission with the Goku and we got numbers for this with that, no shielding. And in that case, they had better comfort because they were in pressurized, a pressurized situation. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, there's a null ref. Um, well, we'll think about that later. Uh, there's probably a lot of things that could be causing problems. I'm gonna just go with infinite electricity for now, uh, to see how other things work out. We are obviously not going to be able to do the mission properly, but I could do infinite fuel, but let's not. That doesn't prove or disprove anything. Um... All I want is the comfort. That's all I'm caring about. And right now they're at zero percent stress. After in the VAB, it said that they would be pissed after five days. I mean, we're through better the better part of a day so far. So maybe maybe the cabin environment is having a positive effect on them. I don't know. Or maybe the whole thing is busted. I don't know. <laughs> Either the whole thing is busted, or the cabin environment is having a positive effect on them. It is true that the water is being consumed faster. So, that's a problem. 
and that's because they're in their suits and their suits have a um what you call it water sublimator so the water sublimator is ticking extra i guess i'll see what happens if we time warp in the tracking station okay here we go i guess we can still keep track of some things over here it's diminishing the electric charge though wait jeb has been exposed to intense radiation oh there's a i don't know wait how how was there a it didn't pull me out of warp saying that there was a solar storm shouldn't it do that yeah and uh when we're here it doesn't count the infinite electricity but that'll be well they'll, they could die so we will have to uh we have to pop back yeah i mean i thought if there was a solar storm it'd pull me out of warp and say hey there's a solar storm expected after a little uh, you know in a little bit not that that we could have saved them or anything but still i thought that was standard practice i don't know why it did not do that but yeah we didn't get that message so is there a log saying that um intense producer of oxygen nope it just says intense radiation it didn't warn about the solar storm ahead of time at least in this log oh it is, there's the solar storm it says solar storm here but i thought they uh, maybe i need to check the settings for whether okay radiation poisoning is happening so this is this is all bad now <laughs> um uh they're not stressed though i'll point out bob has zero percent stress so maybe but jeb has four percent for some reason so maybe the cabin works even though but then it doesn't work in other ways i'm confused so all right all right all right well they, they, they're in the middle of a solar storm we can't have i, I really need better warning for solar storms just random solar storms. It seems like every time I go out, there's a solar storm. That's not how it's supposed to work, right? I need data on how often these things are actually supposed to happen. Okay. Well, I can't revert right now. Shoot, I went because I went to the tracking station and came back. They're all going to die. Um, but we will try this again. Okay. Well, I see a problem here. Um... Solar storm probability was set to 200% for some reason. Um, let's, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go for 100% for now. I don't know how long they're supposed to last. I don't know why shielding efficiency is only 55%. Let's just go for 100% efficiency. Hello? Um, uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, proportion of radiation. Uh, well, I don't know. Shouldn't it? I'll leave it be. Okay, um, space weather. Yes, I want the space weather notifications. Stress breakdowns. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, uh, I don't know what I should set these at, but maybe that's why they weren't, but it, it should, it was counting their stress. It wasn't saying about whether they were having a breakdown or not. So, okay, we have that. I don't know what you guys have for these numbers if you're playing with Herbalism, but uh, we'll go with this for now. Hopefully, that'll reduce the incidence of stuff. Okay, time for some changes. So, first of all, obviously, we want MLI layers. I'll just put 50. We're already low on volume here, so I don't know exactly how to sneak in the extra water. Well, we could sneak it in by actually physically putting it in, maybe. That is, I made a water tank. Um, that's got 810 water. It's an actual water tank. I'm gonna put one right in the middle. So now we've got more water. But our delta V has gone down as a result. So that's not perfect. And then the power... Let's get rid of these panels. You see how the RCS is. We have to put the panels in a particular location, otherwise the RCS would theoretically blast them. Okay, well, we have solar panels. 
they should add up to enough. Shielding we can't put on because, again, this thing doesn't have crew on. I mean, you know, because they're in the command chairs. So we're just going to have to hope that there isn't a solar storm this time. Uh, if it would maybe give us a little bit more warning. I wonder if there could be like a tweak for how much warning we get. Could we get like a few days warning before a solar storm? That would be good enough. Okay, well, we've put a lot of stuff on and it might have a detrimental impact as far as being able to get over to the moon and doing the thing. Let's see. Um, obviously the big four are uh, recuperating, we'll say, or reincarnating. Uh, so it's the Katuki Karuki bunch. And as we saw with the Goku. And Ferdred. Um, no, let's have Joe Berry as a scientist. Okay. Okay, we're all lined up again. And it says they have 66 days of water now, which is way too much, but... Well, we'll see after we launch. So throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And here they go. So now what does it say? Now it says 14 days, so all right. So we've got the right amount with that extra water tank. Okay, booster separation. And while we are thrall down, Bearing separation. Ugh, still awkward there. Good reason, but okay, throttle up. Right now, the electric charge draw is only 0.25. We can't be getting any power. That, that, that seems less than last time for some reason. Why is it only 0.25 per second? Okay, core is out. Separation. And ignition. Okay, that's orbit. 198 by 184. Okay, slightly better burn this time. But still with a bit of normal here to correct for the inclination. And it'll probably disappear on me. As if the fact that it doesn't actually count the delta V down wasn't annoying enough. The fact that it disappears when it's close to being done, but not quite done, is a whole other thing. Ignition. Let me just kill rotation now. Oh, no. Stick here. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, how close is that? <laughs> I can't see the periapsis very well. Oh, we'll take that for now. It's not stopping my rotation. Stop! What's wrong with SAS? Oh, uh, just normal intense radiation. 1% stress, 1% radiation so far. But yeah, we can't go to this level of time warp. It's not really times 100, it's more than that, but can't go there because of some erratic behavior, which sucks. Yeah, I think I'll have to time warp in the tracking station. I don't know how well it's going to track the electric charge, though. Already, hold on, resume. Already it says only one day, even though... Oh, it's move. Why is it turning? Why has it turned at all? I mean, we were pointed at the sun. That's so weird. When you point it at the sun and persistent rotation is working, it's supposed to hold that. Okay, well, we can go to the tracking station now. Hopefully it'll stick there. Uh, maybe Kerbalism doesn't work well with persistent rotation? I'm not sure. Persistent rotation takes SAS. I don't know, maybe... Well, uh, it's, it's back down to saying only 20 hours, you see. So, yeah. Um, doesn't seem to read the fact that we are recharging at all. This is very frustrating. With SAS and persistent rotation, it doesn't seem to work out. With uh, uh, And then we get intense radiation again. Oh... 
I I turned on the solar storm warnings, but it didn't come with a pop up taking me out of time warp. Like it just did the uh, pop up taking me out of time warp for the radiate uh, for the radiation warning, but not for a solar storm. So it seems like we can't turn away from it, but then if we stay focused on it, we can't time warp very fast because of the oxygen thing. I don't know. Maybe some more recent version of Kerbalism has this stuff fixed. This is not the most recent version of Kerbalism, I can tell you that. And it wasn't oriented pointed at the sun when we came back to it either. It drifts a lot. Okay, well, we'll have to do this the slow way. Yep, see, a producer of oxygen. Well, we need to stop producing oxygen. <laughs> I don't want to produce oxygen if it's going to take me out of time warp. But can you imagine going to Mars like this? There's no way. Let's just see what happens when I come out of time warp, whether it suddenly reorients. So right now we're pointing directly at the sun per persistent rotation. Yeah, it did. Look at that. Look, it just suddenly reoriented. I'm just going to bring the periapsis down. While in the VAB, it says that the Kerbals experience discomfort. And even here, it says the habitat is bad. They don't seem to actually be... Oh no, now they've got stress. I take it back. They're like 7, 6, 7%. Seven it's not impossible, but it's not as bad as them only having a 5-day duration. Uh, it looks a little bit better than that, but... Okay. It might be doable with the pass through system though. Um I'll might consider I might consider turning the sleeping berths into basically small crew cabins to give them something. It's actually only a tiny bit of fuel left in this stage. But it'll be enough to do most of the capture. Well, we're here, 8% stress maximum, the radiation is still perplexing. And that's the end of that stage. Alright, separation and ignition. We didn't refill the liquid oxygen tank, silly goose. That's less Delta V than I thought we were going to have here. And it wasn't because of boil off. It's just because we're carrying so much extra stuff now. Wastewater dump. So yeah, this lander isn't quite good enough. We'll land. We'll try the landing. Make sure the engine has the right throttle range. But yeah, it's not looking great right now as far as getting back up again. Well, there's a crater over there that looks nice. Seems like the impact wouldn't be all, all the way over there. Pinkipia. <laughs> it seems like the impact would be over here somewhere. Just saying. I'm coming down really steeply because I decided to do a direct approach. Yeah, we took way too much, mainly because of the way we approached. Okay, we have landed, but yes, not with enough left over. But let's verify that somebody can get out and plant a flag. So, uh, side hatch open. Got that big water tank there. Uh, John Doc gets to be the special one. It's because of convenience. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, can you... Ah, uh, you hopped backwards, you silly thing. Okay, can you get around the water tank? Uh, barely. Okay. Now you're gonna have to climb. Oh, oh. Okay, actually maybe jump through would be better. Uh, okay, AVA through. <laughs> AVA.
Oh gosh, these nitrogen EVA packs are not good enough, I think. Uh, we need to fix the EVA packs, otherwise the pass-through system, they can't do stuff. We could possibly get onto that thing. Uh, oh, oh, we got him out. Uh, okay, oh, all right. Ow. John Doc can't breathe. Why does John Doc only have nitrogen? Who decided, who decided that? I don't get that. Why, why, why on EVA does he only have nitrogen? That's not right. Something has gone horribly wrong here. Well, we can't plan. Uh, come on, come on. You can do this. You can do this. Back in that seat. Uh, 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 no! Silly. Purple. Nope, nope, nope. Ugh. See, now, if you die, it's all your fault. I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, uh, get up there, get up there. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, that's a good enough start. I think you can climb on the outside. Oh, no! Oh, no. John Duck's suffocating. Uh... Go in there. Okay, inside. Quickly. Okay, all right. Um, board command chair. All right, John Locke is not suffocating anymore. Jeez, this is going to be hard making this work with... I mean, I, I don't know why John Locke did not have resources. I didn't... I don't think I touched that, so... Hmm. Okay, anyway, things need to be fixed. Uh, this... Uh, I mean... Yeah, things need to be fixed. What can I say? So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.